Hey guys, I'm Greg Roman from Voodoo Gunworks. A lot of you guys have seen my build we did on a Gen 2. Uh, well, uh, I not too long ago built a Gen 3, so let's take a look at it and see what we did. Uh, we took the opportunity to go ahead and use a McMillan U1 stock. Uh, we were adding a new stock to our Ravage line. We've been working with McMillan for a while on our single shot, and we decided to partner up with them to do a good offering for our Ravage line as well. Uh, I got the chance to try out this stock. I absolutely love it. Uh, I actually like it a little bit better than the stock that's on my Gen 2. The uh, McMillan is a very dead feel. Uh, it has a lot of... Uh, uh, vibration absorption to it it's super super comfortable more of a modern grip up here um, i really like how the the front up here is nice and wide it, it causes my fingers to want to pull straight back and, and encourages proper trigger control um, uh, so far i'm absolutely in love with the stock the other thing too is that we have more of a squared off forend up here uh, i've come to really like this up here where we have nice flat sides and bottom it really helps on the barricades to have a nice 90 degree angle to go ahead and lock in um, other than that uh, we went to a 22 inch MTU barrel on this versus my last one was a 20 inch Kukri uh, so the one thing about this barrel a couple reasons we wanted to go to it first is balance so this rifle is a little bit heavier this rifle comes in at 16 and a half pounds and if you notice if I pick up right here we're balanced about neutral right in front of the magazine well instead of under the magazine well. So I have a little bit ba uh, better balance on barricades. We're also learning too, we're always evolving at Voodoo and, and doing our best to share all the knowledge we pick up, that going to a 22 inch barrel over a 20, you're gonna get a slightly slower average velocity. Uh, however, your extreme spread and your standard deviation numbers are usually gonna tighten up. Uh, extreme spread, this rifle usually shoots about half of an ES compared to my 20 inch barrel. Uh, we're finding the bench rest guys are really liking the longer stuff and that's starting to transfer over into the NRL 22 and ELR site as well. Uh, so far I've been super, super happy with this one. This, one. this is a BART line. Uh, it's still a 1 in 16 twist. I'm not messing with any of the fancy twists out there and I, I'm very, very happy with how this barrel performs. Uh, otherwise, uh, we went to a 360 action on this one. Uh, I did it mainly just because it was our latest and greatest. I wanted to try it out. Uh, now this rifle is nicely broken in, absolutely butter smooth, super fast. Uh, it's it's been a great rifle. It took me a little bit to get used to it because I'm so used to running Gen twos. And once I retrain my hand and broke the rifle in, it's absolutely lightning fast. Um, we do. Stick with the Trigger Tech uh, two-stage, diamond two-stage. It's my favorite trigger out there. Uh, super crisp, super consistent. I run this personally. It is about uh, eight ounces on the first stage and about 14 ounces on the second. Uh, again, that's very much a personal preference. People run them all over the place out here. Um, but this is, this is the way I like it, my favorite trigger. Uh, moving up to the optics, I took my zero compromise and, and moved it over to this rifle. Um, this, this scope is still the, the, the absolute king for NRL 22. As I joke, it, it's the Ricky Bobby of the NRL 22 scopes. It's the best there is. Um, we like it because it's got a whole boatload of travel, 30, uh, 36 millimeter tube, 35 mils of travel. Um, it is super, super forgiving compared to some of the others out there. Uh, I do have a Night Force out there, which I really like that scope. I like this one a little bit better. The main two reasons, the Parallax and the Ibox are both a little bit more forgiving. And when you're uh, trying to speed things up out here off the barricades, that really comes into play. For the mount, I've moved to the Embrace from American Rifle Company. Uh, two reasons I did that. One, I do bounce my scopes back and forth between a couple rifles because I'm always, always shooting a bunch of stuff. And I just kind of like doing that with a one-piece mount. Uh, number two is I wanted to use a 50 MOA base uh, combination. So I have a 30 MOA scope base on the bottom, and I have a 20 MOA embrace mount that gives me 50 MOA total. It's about where I want to run for the scope, so I have really crisp uh, uh, sight picture at both the long range and the short range all the way down to 25 yards. The other thing I like about this scope, or this mount, I apologize, the mount, is that we have a built-in level here on the left side. Uh, I run it in the forward position because I'm getting old and I find that uh, when I glance out of my left eye, I can't focus as close anymore. But uh, this little level comes in handy really, really quick. Uh, it's an awesome little level. I'm running a scope chap here uh, from Scope Chaps and giving that a shot. I really like it. It's uh, kind of a cool uh, dress-up feature to, this, to the scope. 
It helps a lot when you're running off of barricades. So I don't beat up the scope on the barricades, especially like the step ladder. And it gives me a place to put some patches from my, my friend's companies. So if we take like McMillan, who's been a great supporter of Voodoo and me personally, uh, I do my best to represent them. It gives me a couple spots to put a few patches. Zero compromise on the other side. Um, and that's about it in the nutshell. Oh, one more thing. Uh, I usually always run a sunshade. A uh, couple reasons. Uh, I do find it cuts down on the amount of dust that builds up on the front lens. And also, it gives me a little bit of protection. I actually had a, a oops moment where this rifle fell over off a barricade and uh, it landed on a concrete uh, surface on the sunshade and the sunshade became the sacrificial lamb over the scope. Uh, so it bent the sunshade and cross-threaded it onto the scope, but there was no damage to the scope. I actually sent it up to ZCO and they took a look at it, inspected it, everything was good to go. They took the old sunshade off and they had it backed back to me in route in less than 24 hours. But again, because I had that sunshade on there, it took the brunt of that fall instead of the scope. Uh, but that's my rifle in a nutshell. Uh, I hope to see you guys on the range in an NRL 22 match pretty soon. And uh, yeah, thanks so much, guys. We'll see you next time.